Grenoble, a city in the French Alps. Here, the other global player, Suez Leonis de So, has shown how the competence and experience of a private company are to be combined with the interests of the mayor. For a hundred years, the water was under public administration, which functioned really well. As I was elected into the city council of Grenoble in 1989, the pipes, canalization, water reservoirs and the water pump system were in good condition. The mayor at the time, who was the former environmental minister, decided however to privatize in 1989 and passed on the complete management of water to Lyonnais de Zoul, Suez. Here is where Suez bribed the mayor. And it's here where the decision was made to privatize the water in Grenoble. This is also the place where the corrupt mayor was sentenced for privatizing the water to Lyonnais de Zoul's advantage. The bribe sum of 2 million euros was paid to him in the form of trips, cruises, apartments, and by financing his election campaign. The three people from Suez mainly responsible were also sentenced with corruption. But the moral person, the company itself, was not corruption. The chief executive at the time was Jérôme Mounod, who later became the first advisor to the president of the Republic of France, Jacques Chirac. The mayor was Alain Carignon. He was sentenced to several years in prison. As we wrote the book, he was still minister of communication. That made our job difficult. When the book came on the market, he was already in jail. Throughout the whole time, he remained close to Sarkozy. He's seen on photos next to Mr. Sarkozy during the election campaign. You see that on this montage here as well. Together, all is possible. And he remains a close friend to the highest person in the French state. We call it the lesson from Grenoble. Our water supply was in private hands for 10 years. Now it's been handled by the community again since 10 years. So we can compare. What happened during the time of privatization? Lyonnais de Zoul confiscated the complete knowledge. They even printed their stamp on all the pipeline maps. They made the know-how and the heritage their own. At that time, there were no one left within the public service with enough knowledge and who could control them. The corporation raised the water prices and reduced pipeline maintenance and renovations to draw higher profits. This is the water price at the time of privatization. Privatization at Suez. The price goes up. We take it back into our hands. And here we see how the price has developed. At the same time, we've tripled the maintenance work, the renovations of the canal network and installations. The South French Montpellier. I find the management of water in Montpellier disgusting. There have been cases of corruption and of people taking advantage of the situation. The city council granted Veolia, formerly Compagnie Générale des Eaux, an operating leasing agreement in 1989. In 1994, a Congressional Investigation Committee was established, which then sentenced Compagnie Générale des Eaux for corruption and for bribery. The Compagnie paid 
8 million francs to a department within reign of the Communist Party to force them to vote for the operating lease agreement, which they did. The briber was sentenced, those bribed were not. Despite the conviction of those responsible at the time from Veolia in Montpellier, Jean-Dominique Sauchon, the management of water is still in the hands of the corporation. Nadační fond Pravda o vodě má za cíl vrátit českou vodu do správy měst a obcí, s tím, že voda bude zpravována jako veřejná služba a ne zdroj dolování zisku zahraničních koncernů. Pravda o vodě je tady pro lidi, které zajímá, co se děje s českou vodou, kde končí peníze, které se od lidí vyberou a zda budeme pít čistou vodu anebo budeme řešit nehorázné ceny. Instalace cizinců v české vodě proběhla díky tomu, že lidé neměli informace. Pravda o vodě je tady proto, aby tyto informace dostali, stejně jako web Pravda o vodě a Facebooková skupina Voda Vyhledová.